Hey guys, this is Grace and welcome to my channel and welcome to another digging through my stash layout. This time we are working on R and because I had that paper, the sunshine and blue skies from Simple Stories out from my previous layout, which was the digging through my stash queue um, for a quilt, I decided to use that same paper because I am still using some, or I still have a few summer layouts that I wanted to do and this was already out so I'm using that. For R, I am going to use our um, the prompt for, or I'm going to use the letter R and this, the product that I decided to focus on um, will be ribbons because I have a lot of those and in the beginning of the video I showed you two jars that I have with scraps of ribbon. That is where I put my leftover ribbons. That's where I put my leftover ribbons especially the um, you know smaller bits and pieces and also I used to store my ribbons in spools and um, I had taken them out of the spools, um, and, and well, they're not really spools. They're just like, you know how, um, if you've ever like stored the DMC floss, like embroidery floss, have you have that little paper thing and then you wrap around your thread on that. So that's kind of what I had for my thin ribbons, especially when I only have like two yards or something like that. And I pulled them out of the previous container and just stuck them in one of the clear jars that I have on the left side of this video. Or, yeah, on my table. So that's basically where I'm going to pull out the ribbons. And again, I'm only going to use a little bit here. I don't use ribbons very often anymore in my scrapbook. Scrapbooks, but I, I do feel like I wanted to keep them. I don't know why. And so I just have them in that little jar and that's just where it's going to live. And so I'm going to decide to, um, the one thing that I have decided to do with the ribbon was to create a border with it. And so I had cut out that lemon paper and put it in a diagonal. You're probably thinking, I had a lemon paper, why didn't I use that for that digging through my stash Q lemon and I had decided I really did decide I mean I was toying with the idea of maybe using that but I just felt like it was overkill and I wanted the focus to be on the lemon quilt and so I didn't use that one but because it was so pretty and really when am I going to use a lemon paper ever again so I decided to use it here why not these uh, photos are just food photos um, my kids and I one summer i think it was 2019 um we had you know it was one summer and we were kind of looking for something to do i think it was my oldest son's birthday if i'm not mistaken but anyway he wanted to um kind of try something new and i was doing you know just going through yelp and trying to figure out like cheap eats uh, locally and i found this one place that served banh mi sandwiches so when we were in california if you're from california you will um, you will know this place, but we, we have this place called Lee Sandwiches where they serve Vietnamese food. And Vietnamese are pretty popular with their banh mi, which is kind of a, um, a crossover between um, kind of a French plus Vietnamese because they use French bread and uh, baguettes and then they use the pork, the um, banh mi pork and then they add like, you know, cilantros and um, um, pickled carrots and things like that. It's really, really yummy and I have never been able to find a good restaurant for me to like replace my love for Lee sandwiches here in Colorado. Um, but I did find this one, so I was really happy with it. And then we also got some taro um, boba drinks from there. So it was a really good um, treat and it was a fun place to, to discover. And so I took pictures of that and um, I'm just going to document our little fun summer trip. I don't know why I'm doing summer when it's already September, but... <laughs> Oh well. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. So I have the lemon paper at a diagonal. I had pulled out my jar of just scraps of ribbon and I'm just laying them. Right now I am laying them onto the diagonal piece. I did add another pattern paper on the bottom of it uh, because I wanted to have two different kinds of patterns here. And then I also have a black 
cardstock as my um, my my as my background. I did cut my black cardstock in the center and I used that piece to mat my three by four photos. One of them is kind of smaller or thinner than a three by four, but um, it's still like the widest part is four inches. And this is where I'm telling you that I have these spools that kind of, you know, that we use for um, embroidery floss and I'm pulling out some ribbons from there. And I just want kind of an array. I don't want, um, I don't want a lot of texture because I know that the ribbons will already create texture, but I just want like different widths of paper and different designs. So that's what I was looking for when I was going through my ribbons. I added a layer of ATG gun on the edge of that pattern paper um, on in the front and that's where I added the edges of that ribbon. And then on the bottom, I mean on the back side, I am just overlapping them to create a fold and then adhering this. Now, this is probably not the best way to adhere these ribbons because I have a feeling that it's just going to kind of lift off um, later on. But I figured once it's in a sheet protector, it's just gonna stay there. If even if it um, peels off, it's just going to stay in the sheet protector. So I'm not I'm not too worried about that. One thing though that I do notice is that it's kind of unfinished with the, with the, in the front, you know, with just the edges of it overlapped on there. I decided to create a border. I didn't know at this point, I didn't know what kind of border. Should I do like a pattern border, um, you know, like a strip of washi or something like that, but I felt like I haven't really used enough ribbon or enough trim in this photo, and I saw a rickrack that I had kept in the stash, so I figured I would use that instead to, you know, use up my stash. And I, again, I haven't used trims or ribbons in a long time, and so that's what I'm using here. Again, it's not a lot. Um, I didn't make even a small dent in my ribbon stash but at least i was using my ribbons <clears throat> i am so sorry that my voice is not very good i have been teaching a lot lately and if you have ever experienced teaching um without a microphone you know you have to talk over kids and um, i don't have a big room but i still have to talk loud so sometimes i lose my voice anyways um i didn't know what kind of title I wanted to use for this one, but I did find this one four by four cut apart from the pattern paper that I'm using and it's called Paradise Found. And I, uh, or the paper had a Paradise Found word on it. And so I thought, oh, that would be cute to use for this because this was a little gem of a place that we found. One sad thing though, about this local like mom and pop shop that we found it is no longer in existence. I know I felt so sad. Um, I think they were one of those people that were affected by the closures during COVID um, in the, in 2020. And so, yeah, they're no longer there. It makes me really sad. So I can't get my banh mi sandwiches there anymore. But the good thing is I know how to make them. And now, because <laughs> I did, I did try to make some banh mi sandwiches in the beginning of the year. So I know how to make them. So if I'm really craving them, I could just make them myself. One thing though that I also have discovered with, or that I decided to do with this particular page was I noticed that there was a lot of angles, sharp angles on this page. And so I decided to add the title as a, a rounded accent because I felt like that, you know, it just needed some of that soft kind of edges here. And so I am using my scallop die to create a background piece for that paradise found and then i'm going to use my nested circle die to cut out the um, the actual word from the paper and so now it's time for me to adhere my photos and just create my finish off my page here and initially i don't know if you remember this but i had put them kind of more to the left side of the page i had uh, those two three but true three true 
three by four photos on the top and then that one um, kind of slightly smaller on the bottom. Well, um, I needed a, a, a better placement for them for the visual triangle and so I moved them around until I liked the spacing or the placement of them and so that's why I, I ended up with the way the photos are in this particular part of the video. And of course, because it's a title, I wanted to adhere that with adhere it with a foam adhesive, and that's what I'm using here. And I'm going to adhere that to the um, center right of the page. And then I also added some um, other circles of just hibiscus flowers, and I'm adding that to the left side to again to create that visual triangle now again these this paper pad had some three by four pieces or sorry two by two pieces and so i'm going to add those as my accents and also you know just to add a few more embellishments to denote what i wanted to remember of this particular event and so i'm going to add that here and then um you're not going to see it in the video, but I will add my typed up journaling on the bottom piece where you see the diagonal paper, that bottom right side. That's where I'm going to add that. And I think that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. I will have some close-up photos of the layout at the end of this video. Until then, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.